Hi students, today we're going to be looking at the final arm of government and that is the judiciary. I know when you see the word judiciary, you think of the word judge, you like you to think of a courtroom and a jury and all of these dramas that we see portrayed on TV with, you know, Law and Order and CSI and all of these other investigative series that exist. And that does have to do with what we're doing today, but we're not going to be focusing so much on laws and the application of law. What we're going to be looking at really today is the structure of the judiciary. We'll be looking at what the judiciary is made up of. We'll be answering the question, what is the court system in the Caribbean? And we're going to be considering other services that are important to help the judiciary carry out its functions. First off, you need to know that the judiciary is a system of courts. The judiciary is not a person. It's not a group of people per se, but it's a court system. The judiciary has many courts and different individuals who work together to ensure that the laws of the land are interpreted and applied correctly and fairly so that justice is available to everyone. Now the system is divided into different courts to allow for different types of cases to be handled simultaneously and in an efficient way. So the reason for the division is so that you don't have a pileup of cases of all different sorts, all being given to the same person or to the same court. It has been broken up into a system so that depending on the nature of the case, the cases, they can be handled by different people in different courts, but at the same time. For that reason, each court and each legal officer has special duties that they are to operate under. So some legal officials, as you can see on the picture here, include a chief justice, an attorney general, a solicitor general, and a director of public prosecutions, or a DPP. And then you see different courts here. So you there's the industrial court, the magistrate's court, some countries have what you call a supreme court there's also the high court and the court of appeal we're going to be looking a little more in at some of these courts as we continue in this presentation the first court we will be looking at is the magistrates courts a country may have more than one magistrates court and that's why you see an s at the end of court plural so you have magistrates courts Magistrates' courts are made up of or composed of certain legal officials, which include the magistrate themselves, a justice of the peace, and a prosecutor. They also have a bailiff and other clerical officers, people to look after the administrative needs of the court. Magistrates' courts have different powers depending on the country that you go to, but in each country, the powers of that court are, court are determined by the parliament of that country. So Parliament is the arm responsible for managing the laws, remember? It's also called the legislature. The law of the country, the constitution of the country decides what the powers of the magistrates' courts are. Some of these powers include one, conducting trials of petty offenses. So if there is a minor offense that is committed, that trial would be conducted in the magistrates' court. Licenses are also granted and can be revoked by the magistrate's court, for example, driver's licenses and food restaurant operating licenses. The magistrate's courts also have power to manage the collection of payments from husbands to their wives or from fathers to their children. So in cases where money needs to be sent between individuals, for whatever reason, you may have um, divorce payments maybe going from a husband to a wife. You may have child support that needs to be paid and in the case where that case needs to go to court, it would go to the magistrate's court. Preliminary trials of certain offenses can be done in the magistrate's court. It's important to note that magistrates, they preside as judges of the petty civil courts. It's considered petty where the matter does not involve a sum of money that's more than a certain amount. And then you'll see this, you see this phrase here, civil courts. Remember our two different types of laws, criminal laws and civil laws, where the magistrate's courts, they deal with 
civil laws. Most of them are will be dealing with the petty civil laws. So if, for example, my tree is hanging over my fence with the neighbor and my neighbor quarrels that one of the branches fell onto his doghouse and damaged his doghouse and he wants me to reimburse him for the payment to have his doghouse fixed. If we cannot come to an agreement, remember, I would have committed a civil offense and if we cannot come to an agreement between ourselves, our case would be taken to the magistrate's court because that would be considered a petty offense. Secondly, you need to be familiar with the High Court. Another name for the High Court is the Assizes or you may see Court of Assizes. Legal officials in the High Court include the Chief Justice, other judges who would be referred to as puny judges. You would see that word on the picture on, on the right. It just means that this judge is not a Chief Justice. So they have sort of a junior rank. That's all that that means. Other legal officials would be a jury, a registrar, and a state prosecutor. The High Court is considered a superior court because it has unlimited, unlimited power over criminal, civil, and family cases. So for that reason, it's called a superior court. Some types of cases that it has jurisdiction over are criminal cases that are too serious for the inferior court. And your inferior courts would be would include your magistrate's court because remember the magistrate's court is also considered a petty civil court. So the opposite of petty, a petty offense would be a more serious offense. So the court of assizes would handle criminal cases that are too serious for the inferior courts. It would also handle matrimonial cases where a person desires a divorce, so the actual hearing that would have to take place before a judge would happen in the high court. Compensation cases would also go to the high court. So in a case where an employee is injured or harmed while at work and performing the duties that they are, they are paid to perform, that case would go to the high court. Civil cases in excess of a certain amount would also go to the high court. If I burnt down my neighbor's house, that would be a civil case because I have caused my neighbor to lose property. I have caused damage to my neighbor's property. So that would be a civil case. But because it's a house versus the doghouse in our previous slide, a doghouse might be $600 worth of material, maybe. Since in this case now, it's an entire house with a lot more money, that civil case would come to the high court. And another type of case that would go to the court of assizes would be a settlement of disputes. Disputes like deed of title, that has to do with land being passed from one person to another. Things looking at verification of wills to determine whether or not the final will that a person left behind is actually genuine and to look at distribution of the deceased person's property. All these things would happen in the High Court. How does the High Court work? In most cases, you have evidence being presented to a judge. The judge would then sum up the evidence to a group of people called a jury. These people in the jury would have to consider the evidence and then decide whether the person who is accused of committing a certain crime is guilty of it or not guilty of it based on the evidence that is provided. That verdict is pronounced by the judge, and if the person is pronounced guilty, then that person receives the consequence of the action, whether it's a fine or imprisonment, whatever the sentence is. And if the verdict is not guilty, then the judge exonerates or removes the charge, dispels the charge, dissolves the charge against the person, and they are allowed to go free. Some countries have an industrial court. That court is responsible for settling disputes between employers and employees. In St. Lucia, as far as I am aware, we do not have an industrial court, but larger countries like Trinidad and Tobago have an industrial court. The industrial court in these countries is independent and it has the same status as the high court. 
So we saw previously that the High Court is a superior court, meaning that it has unlimited jurisdiction over criminal and civil matters. And in the case of the Industrial Court, it has unlimited jurisdiction over industrial matters. This is how disputes in the Industrial Court are settled. First, an employee who has a disagreement or a grievance needs to present it to the employer. If the employer does not acknowledge the grievance, then eventually the case would be taken up to the Ministry of Labor and that ministry would need to intervene. If, after doing so, the employer and employee, with the intervention of the Ministry of Labor, still cannot come to an agreement, the Minister of Labor would have to refer the matter to the Industrial Court. Some matters that are settled in the Industrial Court include the engagement of workers in illegal strikes. There is actually a procedure, it's called a grievance procedure, that needs to be followed by employees who have issues with their employers. Employees cannot just decide out of the blue to go on strike one day. If that is the case, then the employer can bring the matter to the industrial court and file a case against the employees. Another matter settled by the industrial court is the wrongful dismissal of workers. If someone has evidence to show that they were fired from their job on inaccurate or uncertain grounds, then that employee can bring, or that former employee can bring the matter to the industrial court. Wage disputes may also go to the industrial court, as employers and employees need to agree on matters pertaining to salary increases and so on. Another important court that you need to know about is the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal is also known as the Appellate Court or the Court of Second Chance. So you may see any of these names for the Court of Appeal. This court exists because the judicial system acknowledges that the other courts can make mistakes. And as much as possible, the judiciary that arm of government seeks to provide equal access to justice and impartiality in justice as much as possible. The Court of Appeal is a means that parties can use to rectify an injustice that they think has been committed against them when their case was presented in court. Each party in a case, if they are dissatisfied with the ruling of the judge, has a right to challenge that decision by formally appealing against it. So let's say John and Bob, they had a a civil matter where referring to the example of the tree branch falling on someone's yard. So John has a tree with a large branch and that large branch fell off and it destroyed Bob's dog cage. If the judge ruled that John did not need to pay Bob any damages for the damage done to the dog kennel, and Bob is dissatisfied with that ruling because he feels as if he has not received justice, Bob can appeal the judge's decision. When Bob takes it to appeal, that court will have the power to change the judge's decision So that court can say, yes, John, while you were right in this way and I agree with the judge on this part, this other issue is also important and so I would like you to pay Bob a, a small sum of money for compensation. The court judge can either also cancel that decision and say no that magistrate in the magistrate's court was completely wrong in saying that john had no wrong that is incorrect john has all the wrong and to compensate bob fully for his dog his dog house that was destroyed or the judge in the court of appeal can say that he completely agrees with the ruling of the judge from the magistrate's court and say no it's correct john john has absolutely no wrong in this case and he is going to remain without having to pay Bob. The legal officials that you would find in the Court of Appeal include the Chief Justice, and you would also find other court judges.
The Court of Appeal hears cases against issues that have to do with, one, the proper application of the law, in the event where a person or a party feels as if the law was not properly or impartially applied to the case, then the Court of Appeal would look again into that case. Secondly, if the length of the sentence is not fixed by law, then the Court of Appeal can look into that case. So, for certain crimes, there are fixed sentences that one can receive. So, whether it's from a period of 5 to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, and so on. For other crimes, the length of the sentence is a very large gap and it is left to the discretion of the judge to decide how long the person is going to serve in prison. In a case where the length of the sentence is not fixed by law and one of the parties involved in the case feels that the judge did not exercise proper judgment in giving the sentence, that person can appeal the case and it will go to the course of appeal. And then thirdly, if there are any other reasonable grounds to believe that the judge in the previous court did not make the best decision, then the case can be brought to the course of appeal. Just so that we're clear, decisions by the magistrate's courts and the assizes or the high court can be taken to the court of appeal. These decisions from these two courts can be taken to the court of appeal. Then, if the court of appeal makes a decision that the party still does not agree with, an application can be made to the judicial committee to receive permission to appeal to the final court, that is the court with the highest jurisdiction. In in most Caribbean countries right now, that is the Privy Council. It is the final court of appeal in the British court system. Going back to John and Bob and the tree branch that caused destruction of Bob's doghouse. John and Bob had a civil matter, so their case was taken to the magistrate's court. The magistrate said that John was not guilty of causing any damages to Bob's doghouse and that John didn't have to pay Bob anything in compensation. Bob disagrees. Bob thinks that he should receive compensation. So he takes his case, he presents his case to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal says, All right, Bob, we have reviewed the case and we agree with the magistrate that John does not owe you any compensation for the doghouse that was damaged. Bob is still disgruntled. He is still displeased with the decision of the Court of Appeal. So Bob has to make an application to the Judicial Committee to then receive permission. He cannot go straight to the Privy Council. He has to receive permission from the Judicial Committee because they have to see good grounds or good reasoning for him wanting to bring the case to the next court. They need to give him him permission to write to the Privy Council or to appeal to the Privy Council to ask that body of judges to look into the case a final time. And if the Privy Council, which is the final court of appeal in the British court system, decides then that John is guilty of causing damage to Bob's doghouse and that Bob should be compensated, the Privy Council can then reverse the decisions of both of the previous courts and have John pay Bob or compensate Bob for his loss.